G'day and welcome back to Buildsome. This time I want to show you uh, three joints that we commonly use when we pour concrete. Uh, just to explain what, uh, what I've got drawn here, I've got two brick walls which uh, represent the outside of a, a single building or two buildings, doesn't really matter. I've got a sand bed down to put my concrete on. Uh, because this is actually outside, I don't really need to have my um, membrane. But anyway, all that sort of uh, doesn't matter for this uh, video because I'm just concentrating on the joints. Now, if I was to pour concrete between these two walls, I've got a bit of a problem because concrete does expand, it does grow, as they say. And if it was to grow and it was poured tight between these two walls, so no gap here, then it would actually start to push and crack these bricks out. So the first type of joint I want to show you is, is an expansion joint. So all it is is a piece of generally about 12 mil of, um, bitumous uh, material, or they do have a foam type product as well nowadays. It's put between the concrete and the other material, in this case brickwork, but it could be steel or something else. could also be another bit of concrete. And all that does is when the concrete grows, it obviously allows this material will compress and that allows for the expansion and contraction without breaking the opposing material. So that's the first joint, is the expansion joint. Now obviously this is a, a pretty long bit of concrete and inevitably you will get cracks appear in your concrete. And if we don't control them, they will just randomly crack across the slab and they'll look unsightly. So what we can use is a control joint. And all that basically is, is we weaken the slab at a point of our choosing and that allows when the slab does crack it gives it a weak point to crack along and because we've got a crack, or sorry, we've got a line in the slab there already then the eye doesn't see the crack and it controls it, makes it nice and straight and it just makes it look a whole lot neater. So all that, that's just formed with a concrete tool or well, nowadays they uh, commonly come back and cut that slab, that cut into the slab you know, a couple of days after they've poured it. Um, but that's just a control joint so we control where the slab is going to crack. Okay, so we've had the expansion joint and we've got a control joint. Now obviously, depending on how big your concrete pour is, there's only so much concrete we can pour in a day, and we may only want to pour a certain amount at one time. So we have to be able to continue and add to our slab without, um, and keep the slab as a single unit. The problem is, if we pour two slabs of concrete next side by side, if for some reason this slab was influenced by the ground pressure or an up you know, an up force in the ground, it can move up and down without affecting this slab. So you know it's just gonna move on its own and obviously cause a trip hazard. You see this with council footpaths and other slabs all the time. Because this slab can move independently of this slab. So what we have to do is we have to create well there's two ways. The first way is a key joint. So you can see here the slab's actually got a, a keyed in profile and that's created by when we actually go back to pour it, put our formwork in, we actually put a key joint strip on the inside of our formwork so that when the slab's poured that profile is created and then that's removed and the next slab is poured up against it. So now that is, those two slabs are keyed together still got our little joint there so it looks the same but if this slab now was to get lifted up then it would bring this slab up with it so it probably wouldn't lift as far and you wouldn't get the trip point because those two would stay at the same level so that's a construction joint it just means we can you now stop work one day come back the next day and keep going and keep our slab locked together as a one one unit the other method for a construction joint and quite often used in conjunction with a key joint is what we call a dowel joint. So we've poured this slab, let it set for a couple of days 
and what we do is we go along and drill a series of holes now the size of the holes, the spacing all that sort of stuff would have to be determined by the structural engineer when he designs the slab um, but basically you uh, drill a hole into the slab what you do with the already set slab is you put grease or some other lubricant into the hole and then you insert the dowels into the hole so what's going to happen is we're going to pour concrete on this side the concrete on this side will grab and lock onto the dowels but because there's grease on this side that if the slab shrinks or moves back that will let the, the dowels will still slide back and forwards but they can't um, if the slab lifts up then the other side's going to come with it so it, it lets the slab it let, does let the slab um, contract but it stops it from lifting up unevenly so there we go there's two construction joints a key joint up here and a dowel joint up here alright so there we go there's three common joints used with concrete the expansion joint the control joint and the construction joint. 